finally got my camera straight. And let's talk about Crimson Gem Saga, a game that many people know about, but don't really talk about. Intro. <laughs> Greetings, Gemstones. It's your boy, Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about a hidden gem that I think should really be talked about more. There's many videos on YouTube about it, but I think I've only found about five actual reviews, and they're all pretty short. And it's going to be about a game called Hidden Gem, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Crimson Gem Saga. Uh, it's a PSP game, and it's one that I really enjoy, but I don't think when people talk about it, they really get into too much depth about the game itself. So, I want to talk about this game because it really brought me back to my childhood and how a lot of turn-based, old-school, pixelated RPGs were like. And I really want to share that experience with you. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Do you like JRPGs? Is turn-based combat your thing? How do you feel about cliche storytelling? Well then, this hidden gem on the Sony PSP is right up your alley. Crimson Gem Saga is a game that throws back to the wonderful time-consuming games of yesteryear. So what's the game about? Well, let's get into it. Killian, or as I call him, the complex kid, who whines a lot, and I mean a lot. When you hope to graduate first and don't in his case, and then have a future party member throw some salt on the wound by assuming that you did, doesn't make life easy for him. Luckily for Killian, a chance arises and his fate is changed, especially when you meet your party. An alcoholic with a hammer, a manipulative and sexy treasure hunter, and a magic man with mystery behind those eyes. As you're tricked into finding the wicked stones, gems that are powerful and priceless. Your typical anime plot in game form. Another one that keeps you on the beaten path to victory with some humorous jokes along the way. This gave a nostalgic feeling and brought back memories of other classics. So let's get to the gameplay and the battle system to see how this one plays out. This game is one that is enjoyable to play, even though it takes tropes from other games. As for controlling Killian, as other JRPGs were at the time, you walk or run around town talking to NPCs to figure out what to do next. The interesting thing is that there are quite a few American names in this game, like Sean, or Erica, or Ted, or Eleanor, or, wait, what? I found Jesus. Ever want a character to say something when they get something good in a game? Well, another little feature that was new was Killian reacting to treasures that he found all over the world. Like these right here. Pretty cool in my opinion. There are no random encounters in this game. All the monsters are on screen with the same sprite for all of them, except for later on in the game, which they can ambush you, or you can ambush them. See that? That happens when you get to them first. Another great feature is the fact that you can do multiple hits when you choose to attack an enemy, by hitting the X button at the right time, eventually doing up to three hits in a row. And all the characters can do this, not just one of them or a specific one. After battle, you receive SP to put toward your very expensive abilities, which you can decide on which ones you want to have. And a lot of those abilities are pretty awesome because you can do team attacks, where two or more people can do an ability 
that range from pretty okay to so-so. Here are some examples. Also, there are not very many side quests, and the world exploration in this game is almost non-existent. What's really cool about that is that it mainly keeps you focused on the main plot. And with that being said, let's move on to the music and the sound. The music isn't half bad, and many tracks are very pleasant to the ear, especially the battle. Also the sound of slashing and clashing swords and knives, magic being wielded, hammer smashing down, and fisticuff hits are so satisfying to hear because they make you feel more engaged in battle. There is some voice acting in the game as well, mainly through oh, story parts, well, and there is a lot of a acting in the battle scenes. That Most of them is between Where the exactly characters though when it comes to the story. And with I that being said, let's head on to the, the graphics. And sell them for a profit. <laughs> I bet that's more enjoyable than working for a civil militia. Crimson Gem Saga has visual hand-drawn sprites, and in this game they look amazing. So do the well-designed homes and environments. They are very, very beautiful to look at, even on a TV, which is surprising because usually graphical quality depends on how large a screen is, and in this aspect, that's not there. One thing that is also great to see is the sprites actually moving or doing actions on screen, or having reactions, like this one. It really is the tiny things that always add something great to a game like this. And with all of this being said, let's head on back to the chair. And there you have it guys, Crimson Gem Saga in a nutshell. Again, like I said earlier, it's one that I really, really enjoyed and brought me back to my youth. One thing I didn't mention that I want to mention right now is if you look at this picture that I'm showing up, it's the way the shopping system works and many RPGs have done this before Final Fantasy 6 comes to mind and I call it the grocery store shopping method where you can buy everything that you want all in one go instead of having to buy oh this person needs three boots or three boots for three different characters and you buy one and then you gotta buy another and you gotta buy another no in this one you can actually be like I'm gonna choose three of them and buy all three of those at the same time but I also want to buy this armor and that armor and that armor so I'm buying all six things at once which is really really great it's one thing I forgot to mention it's definitely a game you should play get your hands on it if you can because this game not only looks spectacular the gameplay is fun the reactions from finding different treasures is always nice to see the back and forth with some characters, although I do have to say that maybe there could have been better relationships with them, is still pretty good. I At least I enjoyed it. So definitely get yourself a PSP if you can. Get yourself Crimson Gem Saga if you already have a PSP because it's a game that you're really, really going to enjoy. It's not a very long game, about mm, 25 hours, 30 hours maybe. I mean, could, you could push it with all the side quests, but that's really what I got out of it, you know? So, if I were to actually rate this game, if I were to give it a grading scale, I'd probably give it a, a B-. minus. It was still a really, really fun game. Or a 7 out of 10, if you like that kind of thing. So, and on that note, guys, I'm going to end the video right now. I always hope you enjoy watching as much as I enjoy sharing my hobbies and habits and favorite things with you. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to see my latest videos. I will see you in two weeks. And as always, gemstones, do me a big favor and stay shiny for me. As always, guys, thank you for watching. And if you like what you see, feel free to click on any of these boxes on screen to check out my other content. 
or hit me up on any one of the social media sites on screen as well. And as always, have yourselves a great day and take care, Gemstones.